Hello, I'm Paul Madsen, Director of the Arizona State Retirement System. I'm going to spend my time focusing on our response to the pandemic. And I'll spend my time speaking on two areas, number one, investment management, and number two, operations. On the investment management side, we prioritize as follows. Number one, maintaining ample liquidity. Number two, searching for opportunity. And only number three, rebalancing the portfolio. On the operation side, we came to several quick decisions. The first one, we determined, of course, that we were an essential service. Number two, we determined that we would need to cancel one-on-one -on -one and group meetings with our members. And then number three, we needed to expand significantly our work from home program. Now, we had some initial concerns with how we were going to significantly expand our work from home program. And those concerns came in the following areas. Number one, ensuring data security. Number two, ensuring no or limited service disruption. Number three, ensuring productivity. And number four, following state law and administrative guidelines. Prior to the pandemic, we had a fairly robust telework program and therefore migrating to fully telework environment was relatively easy with the exception of the call center. And that wasn't a large problem, but it did take us an additional one week in order to make sure we had security and technical issues resolved so that we could go from to a work from home environment with our call center. We started with a residual workforce in the office of about 20% in the early days of the pandemic, and it quickly fell to 15%. We're at about 8% of a workforce in the office on any one day now. Since the pandemic situation has caused us to go from the significantly work from home environment, we've noted the following. Number one, actually higher productivity among staff, and we have metrics for that. Higher engagement among most staff, and then I've noticed personally that I've become somewhat closer to staff members because I do a bi-weekly dialogue with the director or at any one time there's say we have 200 staff members roughly. So I do say two of those every uh, two weeks and we'll have an average of 100 people over 80 people on the call, really interactive, asking questions, chat, sending messages through the chat box and so forth. And I found that I have become closer and I think uh, a number of employees closer to me through that process. Employees typically that you might not engage with on a, on a typical physical office environment day. The most frequently asked question that we have had during the pandemic from our uh, staff, will they be forced at some point to come back to work when it is uh, not safe to do so or before they're comfortable doing so? And our response has really been consistent. And that is number one, employees won't be asked to come back in an, uh, until the environment uh, has changed and we feel it is significantly safe. And that will be based on infection rate data. Number two, we'll be giving ample notice, minimum of one week and probably two weeks notice before anyone would be asked to come back to the office. Now, as far as member communication, our member communication approach was focused and few. So focused meaning our message was essentially that the benefits that we provide are guaranteed we have significant liquidity, and we want you, our member, to be able to focus on more pressing aspects of your life. We're here, our programs are guaranteed, and our benefits are guaranteed. We have ample liquidity. We'll focus on the work, and you can go on with your lives focusing on family, friends, and health. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Have a great and safe day. Bye-bye.